The Dyer Ramadan study explored the real world safety and effectiveness of glycolyzide modified release in people with type 2 diabetes fasting during Ramadan. Dyer Ramadan was a real world perspective international observational study conducted in nine Asian and Middle Eastern countries. The first real world international study of its kind. Dyer Ramadan included over 1,200 people with type 2 diabetes who were already taking glycoside MR prior to the observation period. Ramadan is a period of prolonged fasting lasting a lunar month, where oral intake of anything, including anti-diabetic drugs, is forbidden during daylight hours. Adequate glycemic control is challenging during this period, with an increased risk of hypoglycemia due to decreased food intake during daylight hours and hyperglycemia due to reductions in the doses of anti-diabetic medications and altered diet. To be included in the study, participants needed to be at least 18 years old with type 2 diabetes that was either controlled or suboptimally controlled, be experienced at self-monitoring their glucose levels, and have been treated with glycoside MR for at least 90 days before the study's observation period, either alone or in combination with other diabetes treatments, except insulin. According to IDFDAR guidelines, patients visited their doctor pre-Ramadan and post-Ramadan. This real-world study spanned between those two visits, from six to eight weeks before Ramadan began, till four to six weeks after the end of Ramadan. Participants received a diary at the pre-Ramadan visit to report changes in anti-diabetic treatments hypoglycemic events and other adverse events. The study participants showed characteristics typical of adults with diabetes. They were 54 years old on average, 55% were male and 45% female. They'd had type 2 diabetes for an average of 5.4 years, had mean glycated hemoglobin levels of 7.5% and were taking a mean dosage of 74 mg of glycoside MR. 41% of patients were receiving just one anti-diabetic treatment, glycoside MR, at baseline. 27% were on dual therapy with glycoside MR and metformin. The rest were on dual or triple therapy with DPP-4 inhibitors, 16%, SGLT-2 inhibitors, 10%, GLP-1 receptor agonists, 3%, or other agents. At study entry, 95% of patients were treated with glycoside MR at a dose greater than or equal to 60 mg, and no mean dose change was reported during the study. At 2.2%, the proportion of patients reporting at least one symptomatic hypoglycemic event during Ramadan was low, with no severe hypoglycemic events reported. Just 1.6% of patients reported a confirmed symptomatic or asymptomatic hypoglycemic event. Even outside of the fasting period, less than or equal to 0.3% of patients reported hypoglycemic events. In addition, patients treated with glycoside MR experienced a significant reduction in HbA1c, fasting plasma glucose and body weight between study visits. On average, HbA1c levels between pre-Ramadan and post-Ramadan visits decreased by 0.3%, glucose levels by 9.7 mg per deciliter and body weight by 0.5 kg. Overall, this is the first real-world study to show that patients with type 2 diabetes treated with glycoside MR without dose adjustment during Ramadan can fast with a low risk of hypoglycemia and no risk of severe hyperglycemia, even in prolonged fasting period, whilst maintaining glycemic control and body weight.